Stumbling block in my life Them no wants to strive One day at a time to give more blessing Even in abundance sorry ain't got nothing Still I call for me king It's more blessing Give thanks life loot and fair present The mindset Blessed love, manners and respect Do give thanks and praise for life This is the mindset program I just started the host And I'm here with a great honor To be here with the honorable Muta Baruka yeah, man, give thanks, man. Wrap up all right. Yes, sir, give thanks. First and foremost, I want to congratulate you on your lifetime. Oh, achievement, man. Yeah, I repent. Yes. Man. But we don't get it yet. We don't get it yet. No, it's 25. 25. Yeah, 25. Yeah, 25. Yeah, 25. Yeah, 25. Yeah, 25. The mindset, thought provoking, you know. I'm your host, I'm your Ida Star, and we're there with our brand new mindset series live on the YouTube. Subscribe, I just start mindset channel, YouTube, bless it love. Blessed love, blessed love, manners and respect. Do give thanks and praise for life, health and strength. This is the mindset program, I just start your host and I want to greet the item in the divine name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Eel Selassie I the first. Conquering Lion of the tribe of Judah, elect of God, light of this world, his own divine majesty. Empress Men in the first, I want to greet the item in those beautiful and divine name. Holy Emmanuel I, Selassie I, Ja, Rastafari. One more day above ground and we give him thanks and praise for life because that is our greatest position. No, no greater than that and today we have a, a special program for the item Zain, um, a very um, interesting program that I myself am looking forward to Zain, we have a, a special guest Zain, and is an elder and is a great honor for I man for even have you know, such elder within Ayman um, missed right now, seen, and is an elder who is a computer genius, seen, um, a author, a reggae artist, seen, and a lot more things, but most of all, very active within the African diaspora and African people. He is very um, active within the whole community as African people. So with us today we have a special guest by the name of Giza Graham. I want to introduce him to the mindset program, blessed love, honorable. Yes, my brother. Good to be here. Good to share thoughts with the eye and with all who will listen to this, either now or in the future. Because right now I feel it's a great honor and a pleasure and a pleasure and a duty that I now have because right now there are certain things I would like to share with everyone. And I want to know that what I'm going to share will be of benefit to everyone because that's what I'm here for. Rastafari. Yes, yes, Elder. Yeah, man, do give thanks, um, you know, for the eye presence. Um, it's good for see the man, you know what I mean? And um, we give thanks to the eye life. All right? Yes, I. Yes. Now, um, one of the first things, yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 I was gonna ask the eye. Um, you know where, where the eye from? You know where, where is the eye? Um, originally from? You know. Yeah, man. I was born in Jamaica. I was born in Martha Bray, but I grew up in Montego Bay, and I traveled to the UK on a government scholarship. Scholarship. I mean, the government, Jamaican government, was offering certain scholarships to go to the UK. Mm -hmm. So I got one of those scholarships. All right, but uh, 
But all right, me, me, but before you reach, me know what me, me know say so you know reach at England so quick, Zane. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, more more you, you 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 come from Montego Bay, Zane. That's where I grew up. That's where you grew up. So yeah. we we spy in Jamaica, you were born. In Martha Bray. Martha Bray, where is that? That is in Trelawney. Trelawney, you know same, talking, up the you know road. When I'm talking about Martha Bray River, yeah, man, I just saw my barn. Rastafari, so that is us up the road then, really? From, well, from, yes. from, 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 from Montego Bay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. All right, well, talk to me about, um, you know, as a youth, you know, grew up, growing up in, in, in a, um, in a Montego Bay, you know, what, what was that like, you know, as a youth man, a group? Well, as all youth, it was a joyful experience. I mean, when you're a youth, you know, mm-hmm. you know, you just love being a youth. So all the trouble, all the trials might be around you, you know, you, you, you know, you, as a youth, you just go with it. So yeah, it was, it was beautiful. And especially at school, I had great, 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 great experience at school. I loved going to school. So yeah, but I mean, if you're gonna talk about experiences, I mean, one of the experiences that might be people are the most interested in is I was around when the Pearl Garden thing kick off. And at the time I was about 14 years old. See. And although I was kind of young still, I can remember very, very clearly, the vibes, because it's one thing to read about it and hear about it, mm. but to actually be there yeah. and to, you see, the, the, there was a certain atmosphere that unless you can feel it, you wouldn't actually know. But um, I remember, for example, I used to live on Jarrett Street, which is parallel to Barnett Street, and the, the police station is up the road. And I remember the, the yard where I used to live, um, the, the landlord used to have, used to do mechanic work in the yard. Mm. So it was to give you a vibe. And there was a brother who is, was a mechanic. The man does have beard. The man, no, it's not like, said the man, a, a beach raster. He does have a beard. Yeah. And the man makes sure, man make sure him trim, trim the beard. Because even a man who just have beard, him gonna deal. And those are, those are, are vibes. It's almost as if, if you can imagine, <laughs> this might be a sort, sort of strange thing, but if you imagine when I said God come, mm. and you can imagine all the place just feel, I saw the place feel, man, there was a vibe there that was extraordinary. And, you know, it's a vibe that I can't forget because there was a heaviness, a heaviness, right, where everybody, everybody is on center hooks. You know, it was, it was dreadful. dreadful. So what, what, can you remember um, some of the things them that was being said on the radio at the time? Well, the radio thing, you know, no, I can't remember much about the radio. Mm. I just know about how the people were and how the people felt. That's what I can recall. You know, so I wasn't too much into what the radio said. I can't recall that. But all I know is the, the, the spirit, the vibes that Montego Bay was under. You know, it was, it was, I don't know any word to describe it, you know. Tense. Because, yeah, but yes, that's a good word. But there was more to it than just tension. Mm. There was more to it. There was something. Um, people were conscious that something extraordinary was happening. Something extraordinary yeah. was happening, and everybody felt that sense of this being out of the ordinary, very much out of the ordinary. But as I say, I was I was about fourteen years old at the time, so but I can recall all of that. So all right, um, the I the I you know I held on one thing. Mm. The narrative at the time and and what you say, Zin mm. took place. Mm. Um, yeah. how, how you see it today, Zin, because I think money have been issued for um you know that incident taking place you know some apology 
been issued by the Jamaican government. Oh, 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 you, oh, you see it. You, you, you think that is something enough for, um, you know, what took place? Because, you know, it, it was a ripple effect after, after a couple of years from that very incident. Okay. Regarding the whatever sort of compensation or whatever the government might want to put forward at this time, mm. in a sense, to me, it's a token thing because you can't compensate the people what they went through. There's no way you can compensate that. Mm -hmm. um, most of those people have passed away anyway. And and so what what for for, for me personally when I look at it, what I see is that it's simply a recognition and acknowledgement of what happened. But I don't know what they intend to do with this money, and I don't know how it's going to be, how it's going to be spent. Because, um, you know, money is one thing, but the liberty and all that it means is another thing. Because really, in truth, you see, people talk about miracles, miracles. And you read in the Bible about miracles, for example, the Bible tells you about Jesus um, feed 5,000 people with two fish and um, five loaf and two fish. And that's a miracle. <laughs> well, that's a miracle according to the Bible. And I don't, I wasn't there, so I don't really know. But I see, I live to see a miracle because I live to see the band them who used to live down a railway lane and the, the people, you know, it's people who um, were not academically educated most of them were semi-literate or, or, or totally illiterate. These people used to live in the Goli and all them, you know, and to see, to witness the same people in a, in a matter of 50 years, yeah. feed the whole world. Jesus feed, feed 5,000 people, Rasta feed the whole world with knowledge and wisdom. And that comes from people who had nothing. So it's like, it's like I say, you take nothing and nothing and turn it into something. That is miracle. And mm. that is what Rasta did. I saw that miracle. I'm, I'm, I, I was there. That's something I read about. I see how these men who don't have nothing live in the gutter manage to capture and feed the world with wisdom and knowledge. That is a miracle, my brother. You, Let me see a witness. You, you, you think that is what, um, at the time when Coral Garden took place, you think that was what they were trying to hinder or impede or, or, or stop from happening? No, I can't say what they was doing because it's them know them at door. But um, what, what I would say is that the whole vibration of Jamaica at the time, because I remember, again, growing up, when I was in Martha Bray, as I do now, mm -hmm. just three, four, five. I, my mother lived when I was six. And I remember being told about the Black Heart Man. So when Buddy Whaler sing about this now, it's not just a song, it's a reality. Because as a child, yeah, you remember being told you have to be careful of a Black Heart Man. And funny enough, although that, that was a talk, and a lot of children heard that. So I don't know what other children felt, but I never feel no fear. I never felt any fear, but I know that we were, uh, were being told about being careful of the black heart man. So the general, the general vibes in Jamaica was um, these people were looked on as something to be feared. They were looked at as um, not much more than a dogs, really. You know, so, some things that you treat, and they, you know, hey. These people were just totally disregarded. So, in terms of what the Jamaican government was doing, I think, if I've got to think about it now, I think that they were just reflecting the feelings of Jamaican people generally. Mm. Generally, generally, Jamaican people. And, and that's what I have to say, perhaps even now, there is that sentiment in Jamaica where Rasta is still not really given the, 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 the credit. I mean, okay, so them, them, them give some recognition to Bob Marley, but that's after the rest of the world give recognition to Bob Marley. Jamaica never do that. So 
the Coral Gardens was a reaction to some incident that took place. And they just decided to listen. They could just wipe out them people. That, that's the feeling I got. Because the, the, way, the way the Rasta man, the most helped it. Like I said, not just Rasta man, you know. Even people who could be suspected of being a Rasta man, them clean them up. The, the, the man in street police station couldn't hold everybody out, out in the yard and all kind of stuff. So yeah, it was, this, it was well, this, this, this This is on the day itself or after, after the incident? Well, you see, I was a youth at the time, so the exact sequence of things, I can't, I can't testify to that exactly, mm -hmm. but it seemed that the incident took place like in the night, and then the following day, then that's when the roundup starts. The roundup the following day, the, during that day. So, so um, and then obviously them round up all the man that during that day. So, what happened the following day? So it's, it's, a, it's a thing that took place over a, a few days. Right. So, when when them say um. The, the 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 virgin who started it wasn't a, a rasta man who who create the whole vibes well you see again i i'm a one who don't like to talk what i don't know so i'm not going to tell you about that um but what i would say is that if you're going to talk about rasta it depends on what you mean by rasta you know and, and i think Mm. A lot of people in this time have sort of lost track of what a Rasta man is because you must remember, I know that Howell wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a dreadlocks man. Neither was Marcus Garvey. And yet the Rasta, man, the Rasta movement started out of those people because what it was, you know, was people of African descent in Jamaica were looking forward to a liberation. It was a, it was a, it was a liberation struggle. So um, people wanted to go back to Africa. People wanted to, um, to own their own identity. So even the dreadlocks now, as far as I would think and say, is that dreadlocks was a, a symbol of I and I reject what the rest of the rest of Jamaica say. The rest of Jamaica is yeah. them, them here, well, I know I know him. That means we just totally reject everything. And so it was, so the, the, the dreadlocks thing came as a, as far as I could say, an after our development, but it was, it wasn't started by people with dreadlocks. Natural. You know, because the underlying thing, the underlying thing mm -hmm. was the, the liberation of the mind and spirit of the, 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 the black man. True. There was a recognition. That's what that's what Marcus Garvey was about, um, freeing the black man from the, the, the men that and other chains that the system put on us. And so it's, it's a breaking free of that. That's what Rasta was about initially. But now, you, you know, you get it become to a certain extent like a religion. And... Mm -hmm. The religious aspect of it is a natural development as well, but that's not the original thing. So when they say that the, the, the people who start the thing at the Coral Gardens thing, I don't know who them was. I wasn't there, right? But if there was, if they, when they say was, they weren't Rastaman, it could be that they need to have dreadlocks. Mm. I don't know. True. Yeah. But, but when they're talking about Rasta in, in the early days, you're talking about a liberation struggle. That's what you're talking about. Every, every, in those days, the Rasta man is looking forward to Africa and to the redemption of Africa, mind, spirit, and body. So what, what did I say? It wouldn't necessarily have to be a, a man with dreadlocks then, yeah, yeah, as a Rasta man. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Right. That's what I'm saying. Even people who, did have the, who just have a beard gone to jail. That's judgment. Sin. That is that all that all terribly it was. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> so um you, you you think um the way I don't know if you've been back to Jamaica. 
in recent times. But um, Moby is, is, is a total different place now, you know, in terms of crime and violence. You know, Moby is the place where probably is, is the Kingston, you know, yes. back in the days. You know, they are the Kingston now. Yes. In terms of, you know, road boy thing. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you think um, the whole Coral Garden incident, you think that have anything to do with how it is going on today? All right. Um, the last time I was in Jamaica was seven, seven years ago. Mm. Yeah. And I spend most of my time in, when I'm not in the UK, I'm in Africa. Now, I, to a certain extent, I keep abreast of what's going on in Jamaica, but I'm not going to tell you that I can talk with authority on what actually is going on in Jamaica. But if I was to try to answer your question, I would say that the situation in, in Montego Bay now, so it's, it's a man who in I supposed to talk about it. But what I would guess is that the situation in Montego Bay now has got nothing to do with Rasta as such. That's what I imagine. Because you see, right now what you have is, is gangster business and man a kill man and is all thing about, you know, money and everything and yeah, drugs and you know, so it's you know it don't have anything to do with the original thing that Rasta was about. So I don't think the two are connected. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just a, a, an outgrowth of the way society has developed. Because what you know, while the Rastaman in those times were disregarded, what you have today is that the youth and certain are still disregarded. So although they might not be Rasta, although they might not be Rasta people in that mm -hmm. sense, yeah, yeah, but they fall they fall into the same category of the marginalized, and so as marginalized people they seek their own way of dealing with the situation that they find themselves in. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, their, their approach is, so they're now totally disregarding law and everything. And their approach now is, well, as I say, lawless and seem to have no direction. So I would not associate it with Rasta as such. The only, the only connection is that the Rasta man can feel their pain. That's what I would say. Rastafari. All right, um, you know, cause we 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 are track the I journey, so you know we are gonna keep on track. Um, so the 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 I reach of England now. Um, at the age, at the age of um nineteen. See? No, I, well, I was, I was coming on to coming on to eighteen. Um. All right. I reached in September, sixty six, and. Um, and I was 18 in, the, in December. So by the way, when, when I said that, I was in Jamaica when the last year forward. And so yeah, and and I was, at, at the time I was at Connell College Youth in my final year. And I was one of the people who was selected to be an usher when he uh, come to Montego Bay. So it's something I witnessed again and um <laughs> <laughs> talk to him <everyone. laughs> yeah you see let, let, let me tell you something from i was a youth from i was a very very young youth in martha Bray, i used to think different from those around me i could tell i was thinking different and <clears throat> my mother sometimes used to re refer back to some things that happened when I was a youth. And she said, she meant, one thing she particularly used to like to mention is that she told me one time about that God is up in heaven looking down on us. And she said, she forget, so she didn't tell me that. So a week or two pass, and one day I come back to her and I say, Mom, you know you tell me that God is up in heaven looking down on us? She said, yeah. I said, well, I've been looking up in the sky 
into the hole that God is looking through. And I can't see that hole, so I don't believe you. And I was, I would have been more than four years old. So what I say is that from I was a youth, I'm questioning things. Mm -hmm. And I've always been like that, you know, and forever will be. So when, when Selassie come, um, I did not see the thing as other people might have seen it. Um, but what I saw was a man of great dignity, a man of great stature, not although physically he was not of huge stature, but in his spirit and everything, he was a man of great, great stature. Um, and so, but I did not see Ice Lassie at God Almighty. So I just tell you I, that, that's, that wasn't my, that's not what I saw. Mm. I saw a great king, one, someone that every black, every black person should look up to. It's a, it's a thing that the whole, all kings on the earth before and after should look up to him because it was a great thing in terms of his outlook on life, everything. So that's what I saw. But I did not see somebody who created heaven and earth. That's just my advice. Oh, yeah, so I just mentioned that. <laughs> just, just mentioned that. 66, I was there. But yeah, I, I forward to England, 66. Later on in that year, I fought to England. And yeah, so government sent me, government sent me to England with the idea that I study electrical engineering and come back to work for the government. But no, that was not to be. See, and so you, 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 you went on a scholarship to, um, from the government of Jamaica um, yes. to return. Yes. But you, 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 you abode that mission. You, 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 you didn't bother with that. No. All right. Again, mm. yeah, that was just life taking a natural course that caused that. So I don't want to go into all of that, but yeah. So I end up staying in, in, in the UK. That's the far right. See you. Um, so, all right, because it's interesting, you know, on the day of, of His Majesty, when, when, when um, you know, what you remember, seeing mm -hmm. on the day, were you, were, were you close up to um, the king or... You know, you were distance away from him. What what was, you know, his, you know, his persona, you know. Yes. What was that like? All right. Well, yes, I was close because, as I say, I was um, elected to be one of the watchers for the, the dignitaries and so on. So, but again, because of my vibes, you know, I kind of slide out. After a while, because uh, the, the, the way the crowd was and so on. Well, once I did my my uttering thing, I kind of just eased back. Uh, so, yeah, but like I said, when you're talking about the persona, um, there was um, a certain, you see, when you talk about majesty, um, you see, there's, some, there's something about being majestic. Mm. And the emperor was truly majestic. You could see that this was a majesty. Yeah. Um, so so you, you, you could feel that. That is something you can actually look at the man and see and feel. You know, you can feel his majesty. Yeah. So, yeah. So, like I said, Still, at that time, still enough. As a, as a youth, because I was still, what, 17. And I wasn't most of the dreadlocks or not like that. Um, but I was just someone who always thinking and seeing things and coming to my conclusion about certain things. And so I, I never forget. Um, his presence, which was like to be in his presence. Mm. But I consider that presence to be, I, I've, I felt 
humbled and honored to be part of it in that sense. But um, as I said, I don't, I, I, my, my way of looking at things doesn't allow me to think that he was responsible for creating heaven and earth. Rastafari. Yes, I. And yeah, we're reasoning with um, Giza Graham, Honorable Giza Graham. And he's a special guest today. And um, we're going to go for a short intermission. And, you know, if it's the first time the item uh, tuning on the platform here, don't forget, don't forget to subscribe. All right. Yes, so see the item on the rebound, manners and respect.